Welcome to class this morning. How many of you guys had a good time this past weekend? Oh, yeah. Woo! They who did not go to the camp event this weekend? So, one, two, three, just four of you. Everybody else was there. Awesome. Okay, well, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Norma Hernandez. I'm one of the pastors at Lighthouse Church in Peoria, Arizona. Um, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's my honor to be here. Um, I, I'm also a social worker, uh, and I work for the FEMA tribe. So I work on a reservation, so when I get to work, I move on to the United States, I have to abide by their rules, their laws, and everything else, right? Um, but it's a pleasure for me to be there, just like it is a pleasure for me to be here today. So I just have a small thought that I'd like to share with you. Have any of you ever, are you familiar with this parable? Has anybody ever heard it? Oh, good. Because it's a very simple message, um, and I love, this is something that young people really can relate to, um, more so than uh, older adults or mature adults. It's a very simple lesson, but I'm sure you're going to take something home with it because the word of God is a uh, natural end. Amen? Amen. Let's say a word of prayer before we get started. Father, I thank you for this wonderful morning that you have given us. I thank you, God, for the very good that we breathe. God, I thank you for our health. I thank you for our minds that are clear, Lord. I thank you, God, for every individual that made an intentional decision to be here in the house of worship, God. I pray, Lord, that you would guide us, that you would lead us. I pray that you would remove all distractions. I pray, God, that you would help us to open our hearts, our mind, our souls, Lord, that we would be able to retain what you are about to teach us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so like I said, this is a very simple message, and um, it's, it's very practical as well. So this is, a, this is a little parable. Do you guys know what a parable is? What is it? Story. It's a story, right? Like an analogy, right? Right. So this is the story of a pencil, and um, this pencil, it, the pencil speaks, okay? And the pencil's going to teach us something today. So the parable starts this way. Uh, would somebody like to read it? I'll read it. Okay. In the beginning, the pencil maker spoke to the pencil, saying, "There are five things you need to know before I send you out into the world." Always remember them, and you will become the best pencil you can be. Okay? So, you all know what a pencil is, right? Oh, you actually have one. You don't see pencils. Oh, you do too. Whoa! <laughs> Whenever I teach people, usually have pens. It's rare that anybody uses pencils anymore. But there's something that they learned about that little instrument in your hand. So here we have a pencil maker, and he's telling this pencil, always remember these things. What does that sound like? Saying what? Not to forget. Not to forget what? His commandments. Right? So this is a pencil maker. So we're going to use the analogy of the pencil. We're the pencils, and he's our maker. Right? Does that make sense? Okay, so look at what, what John 15, 19 says. The world would love you if you belong to it. Why would Jesus tell us that? The world would love us if we belong to it. And there's so many options that are bad. Options, right? There's a lot of options, a lot of negative options. Things that take us down, right? Yeah. Does this uh, kind of ring with you uh, anything about um, the crucifixion or the suffering of Jesus Christ? The world would love you if. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Who was the most hated person during the death? Was it he? Okay, so he was persecuted, he was beaten, right? Um, he was set up, right? Um, and that's what the Lord is trying to tell us too. In other words, the world shouldn't love us either, right? We should be like a little thorn to somebody's side. We should be a, uh, 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 we should bring about reminders to people that, okay, I'm not living right, because look at how she lives, and she loves the Lord, and she's not like the rest of us in this world, right? So the world would love, us, love you if you belong to it. We are what we call pilgrims. We're not of this world. We're just passing through. Remember that old song we used to sing years ago, right? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through, right? Well, that's what I want you to think of. Um, but we don't. The Bible says you don't, for I chose you. If you're here, it's by divine appointment. Amen? Amen. If you're here, it's because Christ has a call in your life. There's something that God needs you to do, right? Yeah. So this weekend we talk a lot about our skills, our abilities, our talents. 
our efforts, right, that God has given us because there's something we need to do. We're the body of Christ. We are his hands, we're his feet, we're his mouthpiece, we're his eyes, right? So, I, uh, for I chose you to love the world, and so it hates you. The world should hate you. The world should not like you. We should be persecuted. Ridiculed out Right? Now, that's not a fun place to be. Oh, unless you guys like it. I know I don't, right? So watch what happens to this pencil. First, you will be able to do many great things. This weekend, we learned to identify our talents, our skills, our abilities, our gifts, right? So when, when somebody says to you, or the, or the, the major says to the pencil, you will be able to do many great things. Is there somebody that can say to me, I know what I want to do now? Well, I'll raise your hands at once. What's that great thing that you think God called you to do? Praise him. Worship him, praise him. Help in the church. Help in the church. Support the church. Teach. Teach. What else? Be good and have empathy. Empathy. We need to have empathy, right? And on, on the survey that we did, some of you had that on you, your sports that said mercy. That's empathy of compassion for people, right? What are some other great things that we can do? To lead. An what? To lead. Lead. We can be leaders. We can be exemplary. What else? We can love and have faith for others that don't have it. Right? Love and have faith for somebody else. Speak the word. Speak the Jesus. word. That's really the main course right there. We're supposed to be reflectors. We're supposed to reflect Christ. That's the main thing we're called to do. We're called to serve. We're here to minister to, to the unbeliever, okay? Yeah. All right. So, but only, the only way that you're going to be able to do great things is if you allow yourself to be held in someone's hand, right? If I have a tool, this is my tool. If I place my tool here, is it going to do anything on its own? No. So what did the, the pencil maker say that we have to do? We have to be held in someone's hand. Right? Who is that someone? Jesus. Jesus. Right? We have to allow Christ to take us the tool, right? Me, my, this person, and I've got to give him full reign. I've got to surrender to him so that he can use it. So he can utilize my skills. My lead. I'm the lead, okay, of this little pencil. And he's got things that he wants to do with us if we allow him to take us in his hands. Right. That's the best place to be Amen. is in the hands of your creator. Because you know that things aren't going to go wrong, right? He's in control of whatever happens in your life. Look at what Acts 1 and 8 says. But when the Holy Spirit has come upon who? You. Us. Me. Personalize the scriptures. When the Holy Spirit has come upon me, I will receive power to do what? What she said, to testify, to tell everybody about Jesus Christ. How else are our neighbors going to know what Christ is doing in our lives? If we don't say it, if we don't shout from the mountaintop, and if we don't live it, if they can't see it within us, everybody around you should say, there's something different about you. Amen. Right? Amen. Now you hang around with this group, but you're a little bit different, right? Okay, watch this. You will receive what? Power. 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 You're going to receive power. You know why? Because we can't do this on our own. Amen. Amen? Amen. We can't do this on our own. So we need to receive power to do what? To testify. Don't we sometimes say, oh, I wish I could tell that person how Jesus could change your life. I wish I could tell my coworker that Jesus loves you. You know why you can't do it? Because you don't have what? Um, that comes from who? Yes! See, we're getting some solutions this morning. Amen. <laughs> right? We need more of the Spirit of God within us in order for us to be able to have that power to testify about the goodness of God. Okay? So here, this is what I love about this verse, because he says that we get power to, uh, to you know, work effectively with, our, with whomever, the people in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and where else? Yeah. The United States. Everybody. Right? <laughs> yes, we do. 
Okay? So this is applicable to us here in America because he says to the ends of the earth. Right? Okay? And so this is something that we need to understand. If you want to be used by God, you have to place yourself in his hand because he will empower you with the Holy Ghost in order for you to be able to testify. Amen? Amen. You guys following me? Okay. The second thing that we need to do is we will experience a painful sharpening. Who wants to be sharpened? Amen. Amen. Yes. You're willing to be sharpened. Are you not all willing to be sharpened? Amen. Yes. Amen. What happens? Well, maybe you guys are too young because you guys have mechanical pencils nowadays, right? You guys don't know about these things. Remember in school, we were kids, we got our seat just to get both sharpened yeah. pencil. It's not that you need a pencil sharpening. You sort of hang, hang when you walk by, you know? Okay? So here the pencil maker is telling the pencil, you're going to experience some painful experiences. Amen. Amen. Some of us have already experienced some painful experiences, correct? Amen. Some of us do have some, some, some history, right? Okay? But the Bible says, or this, the, the, the maker says, it's only going to be from time to time. In other words, it's seasonal. Okay? The Bible talks about seasons in our lives. There's seasons to cry, seasons to laugh, seasons of death, seasons of birth, right? Seasons of much, seasons of little. Right? If you read the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But... He says, this is required if you're to become what? Can you guys read? Can you not see it? Read feedback. To become a better pencil. You've got to go through some stuff to become a better pencil. To become a better tool in the hands of the Lord. Right? Look at what the Bible says. As iron sharpens iron. What does that mean? Come on, what is it? Getting strength from the Lord? What does that mean? Iron? You guys know what iron is. I don't have any iron here. Yeah. Right? What happens when you take iron and you hit it? Gentlemen, guys, don't you guys know what it sparks? It sparks, but what happens to it? It bounces off. It bounces off each other and it does what? Makes it stronger. Makes it stronger or it sharpens it. Don't you guys, aren't you guys old school? Do you guys ever get knives and do this to it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? But why do we do that? We're sharpening because it's dull, okay? So that's what the Word of God is telling us. Iron sharpens iron. You know that person that you can't stand? The person that irritates you at school, at work? You know why God placed them in your path? It's character building time. <laughs> right? Gosh, only adults are getting this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to the block, okay? Okay, so that's what happens when you have somebody, whether it's your boss, your supervisor, a co-worker, a co-student, uh, yeah, a teacher, you're like, oh, and you and that teacher just don't see eye to eye. That's because God is allowing that person to irritate you to bring out what needs to be cut out. Amen? Amen? Amen. Your spouse. That thing that he says, you know, that that sentence. Your right? mother-in-law. The mother-in-law. <laughs> your sister-in-law. Yeah. Your brother-in-law. I'm a good mother-in-law, so I would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So those people that irritate you, your mom, your, skin, your dad. That's because God wants you to have that surfaced, so that you can recognize it, and then you can deal with it. Amen. 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 Okay, look at what this version says. I love the Amplified Bible because it says, So one then sharpens and influences another through discussion. discussion. Not fist fights. Okay? Not, I hate you, I can't stand you, I'm out of here. No. The Bible is saying that through one man, that person can sharpen you. As much as you don't like that person, guess what? That person's going to be the pencil sharpener. <laughs> right? Okay? So we have to be very uh, cognizant. Be, be have your, uh, your, you know, your little antennas, your spiritual antennas up and say, Oh, God, now I know why you placed me in this team with this person. Because you're going to start to work on me. Amen? Amen. Okay? So that's going to happen from time to time. Of course, it's seasonal. But this is required if you're going to become a better Christian. You must go through some sharpening. Amen? Okay, watch this. Third, 
you have the ability to correct. You have the ability to correct any mistakes you make. Why? Because the, the pencil may, maker made us with the what? An eraser, right? And nowadays, guys, you know, uh, mechanical pens are so cool because now you can even erase pen, right? Before, when we were kids, we, if you, you didn't pen, it was permanent, right? That's why we preferred to use a pencil. Yeah, then we had the big old blotchy stuff all over it, okay? So you have the ability to correct the mistakes you make. You have the ability to correct the mistakes you make. But you know what we do instead of correcting the mistakes we make? We what? We cross them out. We cross them out. <laughs> and then our lives look messy. There's so many X's in our lives. X's. <laughs> oh, my husband, I'm a husband number four. You got X's. You got an eraser. <laughs> okay. So, you, y'all, all of us are going to make mistakes. If you haven't made any yet, believe me, you're going to make some mistakes. But what we want you to remember that the pencil maker, our creator, He's allowing you to go through those things for a purpose, for a reason. Somebody somewhere is going to gain from your pain. And yeah, sometimes it doesn't seem fair. Sometimes it doesn't, but you know what? That's life. And you know what? Life happens, and life strengthens us. Amen? Amen. Look at what the Bible says in Psalms 51, 7. Remove my sin, the excess. Okay? And I will be clean. Okay? Wash me. And I will be whiter than snow. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 Why do Why do we want to be washed and clean? What kind of church is Jesus coming for? I can't hear you. A what? A purified church? We're gonna start adding bleach to the baptistry tonight. <laughs> Get off, go get all that stuff off of you. Amen? The fourth thing that we need to do is that the most important part of you will always be what square? Inside. You know why, why, we, why the maker uh, identified this portion? Because we put so much emphasis on what's outside and we live in such a facade. We can look at somebody like, wow, that person's got money. Look at how they're dressed and what they're wearing and their designer this or designer that, right? But on the inside, yeah, and then they go home and cry. On the inside, they're lonely, they're sick, they're tired, they have no hope. See why we have to be able to step outside of ourselves and be able to help and minister and serve the, the, the people that are distraught, that their lives are, are over and they have no hope, they have nothing to turn to, right? So we have to consider not just the person's out view or our own, but we need to be considered with, with what's in our heart, amen? The Bible says in Psalm 73, 27, my health may fail. You know, and that's so real to us because of our bodies that they, they, uh, they waste. You know, you get sick, you get leukemia, you get cancer. How? We don't know. We don't really know. It's just something that happens to us. You know, so those are the things that we have to, right now that you're young and healthy and vibrant, be thankful, be grateful. Yes. Take care of your bodies. Amen. That's, that's God's will for us. My health may fail because it's going to someday. And my spirit may grow weak. That's just our natural man. But God remains the strength of my heart. Amen. 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 He retains the strength of my heart. Thank you, Lord. He is mine for a day or two. Forever. 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 That's hope. That's what separates us from non-believers. We have a hope in Jesus, right? He's always going to be there. I'm always going to be under his protection. The fifth thing that the maker said is that no matter what the condition, you must continue to write. What does that mean? And when you're look, look at this, looking at this tool, and that represents me, I must continue to write. What am I going to write? It doesn't matter what happens in the life. I have to keep going and go on with the life. Yes. It doesn't matter what hits you. It doesn't matter what came at you. You have to continue. Continue writing what? Your story, your testimony, your your life's journey. Are you?
Are you going to go on the narrow or are you going to go on the broad way? Narrow. Right? The narrow or few will go through, right? But it's not going to be that easy, right? So no matter what happens to you in life, remember, you are the tool in God's hand and he wants you to continue to write. Okay? Watch this. So the pencil understood, promised him to remember, and he went into the box fully understanding its labor's purpose. So our box, figuratively speaking, is the body of Christ that we belong to. God preordained for you to be here in Denver, Colorado, and for me to be in Peoria, Arizona. Amen? Amen. Okay? So this is your box right here. All of you, if you guys are local, I don't know you, but if you're local to this church, this is the box that the pencil maker has put you in. Okay? So the understanding that, promising to remember, and he went into the box fully understanding his purpose. This weekend we worked a lot on finding our purpose, finding our talents, finding our giftings. So when Pastor opens the box, he has a variety, right? So when pastor comes and asks you, hey, I kind of, um, I heard that you did the, the assessment and it, I heard that, you know, you skill, your, your skills are really high in administration. How about if you come on over and you help me in this area? Hey, how about you? I heard that you're really good at teaching. I want to ask you if you would teach the kids. Hey, how about if you come and help me? We want to start helping at the food bank and we need to minister to the homeless. And we want to collect clothes. We have to have a, a clothing drive for our kids in foster care, whatever it is, right? That's the purpose of you being in this box. Amen. Amen? So you have to find where you're going to plug in so that you release yourself to the maker so that the maker can continue to write the story of your life. Look at what Jeremiah 29, 11 says. I alone know. Jesus, God, he knows the plans he has for you. All right? Plans to bring you prosperity. It's God's will for you to be prosperous. Prosperity doesn't mean for you to be a millionaire, so stop buying the lottery tickets. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, oh my God, it's in a billion. Let's go get one. You're more likely to get hit by lightning than win the lottery. I know. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, he has plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. You know why we have disaster? That's not God's will for us. Do you know why we have disaster? We put ourselves there. Okay? And as a society, are we honoring God? No. America is no longer a Christian nation. Isn't that sad? It's very sad because if our forefathers could see what happened, from the, they would they, 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 they <coughs> cartwheels in their brain if they could see what has happened to us as a nation. Yeah. It's a shame. It's shameful. Everybody looked to America. We were the most prosperous country in the world. And we call ourselves progressive. I don't see any progression. I see us regressing to the days of Noah. Yeah. I see us re Sodom and Gomorrah. I was just going to say, I see us resorting back to the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. We are not progressive. But that's what you get taught in school. And we take pride. And, well, my teacher said the weather was progressive. No, we're not. We're very regressive. We're going back, okay? He has plans to bring about the future that you hope for. So you need to ask yourself, what am I hoping for? Why do I come to church? I want to go to heaven too, right? If you love God and you serve God, that's that's like inevitable. You will go to heaven, right? That's your destiny. It doesn't even have to be our goal. It's our destiny. That's where we will end up as long as we live for God and we accept His commands. You know, and we apply them in our lives. Okay, so we're going to find what is our purpose as a, as a little pencil that we are. Okay, so now, replacing the pencil with you, us, this is us, always remember them and never forget, and you will become the best person that you can be. So always remember the principles above. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 6, 20-23. My son, keep your father's command. How many of us love it when our dads correct us? We're all like, yeah, sure you do. <laughs> Don't abandon your mother's instruction. But you know what we we are when you're when you're young, you know what the mentality is? My mom's so old, she's only 20 years older than me. And my mom's so old, she doesn't even know. And she was, you know, she lived in the prehistoric times. You know, this is the way it's done today, mom. You know? Okay? 
okay? But the Bible says, don't abandon your mother's instruction. Bind them on your heart for until you're 18 and they're going to mess up your life? Forever, for all times, right? Fasten them around your neck. Can you imagine we had cho Bible chokers? <laughs> I start a new fan. Right? Bind them about your neck, okay? When you walk around, they will lead you. Who will lead you? Who? The teachings, not your parents, not your mom and dad, the principles of the Word of God, okay? That's what this means. When you walk around, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will protect you. How many of you guys suffer from nightmares? Well, yeah, I'm going to be honest. One. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, people suffer from nightmares. And you know what's a good cure of? The Word of God. Amen. Right? right? Open up the Word. You know why? Because that spirit of fear and spirit of intimidation will flee. Mm -hmm. Amen? Open the Word. Read it before you go to bed. Memorize it. Recite it. Put scriptures up anywhere that you can see it, right? Right by your nightlight. You know, y'all, 16 and still got your little Scooby Doo nightlight. Put it right there, right? Okay? Um, when you awake, they will occupy your attention. But you know what young people do today? When, as soon as their eyelids open up, they're all. Even all people do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This has become a priority for everything in life. Everything. It's amazing. Girls even need to put their makeup on. They can't. They don't go to mirrors. And be, you know. uh -huh. That's true. I see it all the time. <laughs> okay. We use it. Um, you know, we act, we act like we're taking pictures of people, but we're just admiring ourselves. You know, it's like wow, it's crazy. Okay. So when you wake up, the first thing that should come to your mind is, "Thank you, Lord, for another day." Amen. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to fix what I messed up yesterday. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, because you're giving me another chance. Thank you, Lord, because I have a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not homeless. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that I don't even pay bills in this house, but every time I turn on the faucet, water comes out and the toilet flushes. Amen. All the kids? Amen. Amen. Okay, because every time you flush the toilet, somebody's got to pay for that. But we don't even think about those things, right? The commandment is a lamp. Imagine if we lived, if America went back to living by the Ten Commandments, nothing else, just the Ten Commandments, what kind of people would we be? A lot better off. We sure would. There'd be no lying, no killing, no stealing, no adultery. No speaking bad. Yeah, paper. right. Not wanting and competing with the Joneses, right? We would all be in church on the Sabbath. What an amazing people we would be if we indeed use the commandment as a lamp. So if your world is dark and there's no light, there's not, nothing to illuminate you, you know why? Because we've got to go back. We've got to go back to basics. Let's learn those Ten Commandments. Can anybody quote the Ten Commandments? Oh my gosh, you got to put us on blast. And nobody raises their hands. But if I ask the guys in here about uh, the Super Bowl, I can ask them about 10 years ago and they'll know. Right? I, it amazes me when I'm around men and they're, they know, they don't know the 12 apostles, but they know every player on the basketball team. <laughs> it's amazing, okay? So, and these commandments are also what? After the light, there are instruction, okay? So for young people, sometimes it's difficult for us to accept instruction. We don't want to be corrected, all right? But if you want to be prosperous, if you want to live right, guess what? You have to apply the Word of God to your life. The Word of God is our point of reference. Anytime you need to find out what you, where you should be, what you should be doing, refer to the book of, of life. That's your book, my life, okay? It's also corrective teaching is the path of life. You can't have a life if you're not on the right path. Amen. Doesn't that make sense? You have to be on the right path in order to have a life. That's why you see people that are wandering, you know, and I'm not picking on our homeless population, but look at them, you know, how yeah. sad. Yeah. It's so heart-wrenching. You know, so for me, I, I always think, who's their mom? Who's this young man's mom? Who's this young girl's mom? Or if he's an older gentleman, whose father is he that they don't have in their home? Whose brother is he?
is he? What family does he belong to? Now, some of y'all are so young that you guys make fun and poke fun and you think it's, you know, somebody to make fun of, and it's not because that could be you tomorrow. Yes. That's right. Amen. Okay? Wow. Don't ever think that you're above anybody that's suffering because we're not. It, the, the rug could be uh, pulled right off of our feet. Okay? Watch this. <clears throat> so, one, you will be able to do many great things, but only if you allow yourself to be held with God's hand. Remember that? And allow other humans to uh, access you for the many gifts you possess. So you can have a box, a little can, or something fancy, full of pencils. And like nowadays we have colored pencils, we have you know uh, all kinds of pencils, right? Mechanical pencils or whatever, self sharpening pencils, whatever. But if they just sit there, and then you know what I like that nowadays they get them really cool. You can buy, you can buy, you know, like dinosaur pencils, you can buy skeleton pencils, you can buy apple pencils, whatever, panda bear pencils, whatever, you know, suits your fancy, right? And we buy them, and they're like, no, no, don't sharpen them. Because they're, they're a different decoration. They look so cute, they're so pretty. They're part of our decor, right? Is that the kind of pencil we want to be? No. No. We want to be sharpened, okay, and used. Amen? Every one of us wants to be sharpened and used. The Bible says in John 15, 1, if you remain in me, okay, because, yeah, we will say, oh, yeah, I want to be used, but if, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything that you want, and it will be done. That's the only way. Amen. Because we don't want to be that pretty pen and pencil that's just sitting there for decor. You know, you come to church and, oh, look at how cute that is, Sister Panda. Oh, how cute that is, Brother. You know, whoa, cool. You know, no, that's that's not the kind of Christian we want to be. We want to be the pencil that the Lord sharpens and he makes us better. He takes off that little wood, those shavings that need to come off, and he gives us a sharper mind so that the tip can be used in writing our life's journey. Amen? That's what we want to be. That's the kind of pencil that we want to be. Okay? Second, you will experience a painful shopping from time to time by going through various problems, but you'll need it to become a stronger person. Most of you in this, uh, let, me, let me ask this, how many of you do not have a mother right now? Who does not have a mom? See? Besides older Yeah, all of the, us older people. All of you are blessed to have a mom. Blessed. What if, what if you don't have that blessing tomorrow? Have you ever thought about it? Or do you take your mom for granted? Oh, my mom better be home. She better have those tortillas ready for me when I get there. My mom better have that food for me, right? My mom better take me shopping to Macy's. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because kids don't want to shop at, at Walmart. Oh, Uh-huh. They want a $120 pair of shoes. You know what I tell my kids? When you think that you're grown enough to wear a $120 shoe, you better have a job to go out and buy your own $120 shoes. <laughs> Right? Amen. <laughs> the kids did not say amen. <laughs> okay? True. It's true. Okay? So experiences, the sharpening, the, your losses, your grief, they will sharpen your life. They will sharpen your perspective. Then you start thinking, oh my God, you know, I took my mom for granted. I take my dad for granted. I take the house for granted that we live in. So when y'all get home today, get out there, make the release, throw the trash, pick up the dog, pop up, whatever you got to do. Say thank you to your mom and your dad. Okay? All right? Because that's what's going to get you into this next uh, place in your life. You will be able to correct mistakes you might make or go or grow through them. What a shame when we make mistakes and we keep adding the excess. Marriage number four, marriage number five, marriage number six. We make the same mistakes. Yes, yes. Words of wisdom. We make the same mistakes over and over and over. And then we ask ourselves, why am I still attracted to the same kind of partner? Uh, hello. Get that eraser out. Change your mind. Okay. That's what this is about, you guys. You have the potential. You have the ability, the mental capacity. You have the spirits leading you if you allow it and place yourself in the master's hand and then he can help you through those changes in your lives and, and making those corrections that need to be made. The most important part of you will always be what's on the inside. Amen. Okay? 
But doesn't the Bible tell us that our hearts are continually wicked? Yes. Doesn't the Bible tell us? Because of our fallen nature. Okay? When Adam and Eve sinned, we became sinners. Right. Okay? So all of us are born into sin. So we have to be very, very careful that we continually ask the Lord, wash me with high hyssop. Wash me, Lord, wash me. Cleanse me. I need to be cleansed from the inside because eventually what's on the inside comes out. Right. So you can hide it, you can camouflage it, you can perfume it, and you can make it smell good. But after a while, we're going to be like, hey, whoa. <laughs> did you, did you, you know, it's like some guys that fall off or chase girls that are real pretty. I've seen this so many times because you know, there's a lot of really pretty girls. There's a lot of pretty girls. But then you start talking to them and you're like, oh my God, did you know what came out of my mouth? <laughs> you know? And the guys are all, oh, because that's all, they're, they're just, you know, they're around my sight. That's all they see. So we have to be very careful that we know. Okay, I told the, uh, the, the group this weekend, if garbage comes in, garbage, garbage is going to come out. You cannot expect <coughs> to pass your algebra if you're not studying. Because there was nothing coming in. How is your memory going to you know, regurgitate whatever you had meditated on? It's the same thing in your personal lives and spiritual lives. If you're not reading the Word of God, and if you're not eating daily bread, you have stale bread. You've had something that you heard when you were like six, and you think you're going to be able to, to rely on that teaching to get you through when you're 16, 26, 36. We have to, the Bible says daily, daily we have to take, uh, ingest and eat. And you know what the wonderful thing is about the Word of God? It never grows stale. That's right. Because you can read something when you were six years old, you read it when you're 16, and you're like, oh my gosh, I remember this Bible story as a kid. And then you read it when you're 26, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's me. Huh? Because by then we got a little bit more smart, right? And then when you're 36, you're like, okay, now it's time for me to start applying this in my life. When you're 46, you're walking in it. Yes. But sadly, that's how long it takes us. If we could have avoided a lot of hardships and heartaches, had we learned that when we were 16. Yes. But when we're 16, what are we worried about? Girls and boys and my haircut and my clothes sagging down behind my butt. And all that. <laughs> what? Okay. So let's let's take care of what's on the inside. So whatever you take in, that's what's going to come out. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> So, on every surface you walk, you must leave your mark. Those of you that are in high school, if you finish your freshman year, you've got a reputation, right? Oh, George is such a nerd. Oh, Johnny, man, he's so much fun. Billy, he's a womanizer. Freshman, mm -hmm, yes. You get some kind of reputation because wherever you walk, you leave your mark, right? When you walk in here, you're leaving a mark. Hopefully your pastor's saying, this one, that one, that one, it's going to make it. They're going to live for Christ. They're going to do something for our community. They're going to be uh, trailblazers. or They're going to they're gonna initiate some kind of a plan here to win more young people to Christ. Right? We need to fill up our churches with young people. Yes. We do. Amen. Okay? Our older people are dying now. Yes. And the older people are cars what maintain the buildings, right? But what happens when they die off? When we die off? The building comes down. The building comes down. Or Families are crushed. Or the youngsters are the future. They are our future. Yeah. So if they continue in the walk. One of you has to get up and pastor. Mm -hmm. Some of you have to get up and teach. Some of you have to maintain the building. Some of you have to start ministries. Some of you have to start driving a bus and picking up all the kids from the projects and bringing them in. Yes. Somebody's got to start bringing the food in for our food bank. Somebody's got to start collecting clothes for our clothing silos. Somebody's got to start prison ministry. Somebody's got to start ministry for girls that get pregnant. We don't believe in abortion, but what are we doing to help them so they don't abort their babies? We don't have a solution. But boy, we should be say criticize them. Right? So we have to change that mentality in the church. So no matter where you walk, you're going to leave a mark. My prayer today is that the marker that you leave behind is a positive one, is one that reflects God. You know, all of, the, all of you young people that are here, one of you might be dying, and we don't even know it. One of you might get in a car accident when we go home. What are we going to say about you? What's the mark that you left today? That's how serious this is. Amen. But we take for granted life. Right? Amen. 
It's true. What are you doing today? What kind of a mark are you leaving today? Okay? No matter what the situation, you must continue to serve God in everything. No matter what. Your parents get divorced. That's the most painful thing for children to experience. Okay? The loss, the loss, the death of a loved one is, I think, number two. Okay? Suicide is shattering because that has a ripple effect. When you choose to take your own life, you take a lot of other people's lives because you take their heart. You, you're attached to that person and it hurts. So that person just didn't do that thing on, on his own. There's a ripple effect, okay, because we are relational creatures. That's the way God created us. So we have to remember, no matter what happens in life, no matter what goes up, what goes down, whether it's good, whether it's bad, we've got to always serve the Lord. Amen? So every one of us is like a pencil. We're all number two pencils. Okay? Right? Some of us are coded, and some of us are just yellow. Some of us are plain, some of us are really cute, right? Okay? And we're created by our maker, our creator, for a unique and special purpose. So this weekend we talked about how a lot of us do. We want to be the fingernail in God's box. Because we want to we want to manicure it, we want to paint it, we want to look pretty and sparkly. And the Lord's saying, Is that what you're gonna settle for? Being the nail? He's like, I wanted you to be my right arm. I wanted you to exercise that faith in that right arm. How far can you extend your reach for the lost, for the hurting, for the missionaries? Yeah, maybe some of us can't go to a foreign country and minister in a foreign language. So then how do we support that missionary here? Yes, yes. All of us can just put in our, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is that we can do, right? Okay? By understanding and remembering, let us proceed with our life on this earth, having a meaningful purpose in our heart and a relationship with God daily. You were made, you were created to do great things for God. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay? So, on my last uh, slide, I have a question for you. And we're going to go around the room. And yes, you're going to say something today. Because you're awfully quiet. <laughs> okay? Oops. What will you write with the pencil of your life? And I'm going to start right here with my sister. Just paying forward again, sharing, spreading the word with whoever you have in contact with. You don't know what their life is. They can play face. They can have an outward appearance of greatness. Mm -hmm. you know right. And if you give them a kind word, a smile, a hug, they can make them. Absolutely. So give them a kind look to somebody. You know, I teach my kids. If you, if there's kids on your high school campus that you notice they're always alone, they're always isolated, I says you as a Christian, you should be inviting them to your table. Yes. Amen? Amen? Kids, high schoolers, do you understand that? Don't criticize, don't make fun of, don't, don't you know, add to it. You should say, uh-uh, no, stop. Let's, let's invite that person over to eat with us. Okay? Um, Sister, what's something that you would like to write? With the pencil of your life. I don't to write that. I try, but I do give up, even though circumstances were against me, forces were against me, but... I chose to live in a place of victory instead of fear all the time because it paralyzes you. Yes. <coughs> We've got to move from being a victim to being a victor. Mm -hmm. We've got to live victoriously. Amen. Amen? Regardless of the circumstances. Very good. Sis. Um, okay. Uh, more compassion. Yes. Absolutely. That's something that you learned about yourself this weekend. Mm -hmm. So we have a heart, but okay, what are we going to do with what we see out in our communities? How are we going to change that? How are we going to be part of that solution? Okay, so a little bit more compassion in, in examples, of, not just by mouth. Young man, what do you think that you would like to write with the pencil of your life? Be more open. More open. More more accepting. Very good. 
Okay, very good, sister. I told you I don't know what my mind was. <laughs> she wasn't in my class, so she I had to take the survey. But that's okay. Now that you heard this little talk, it's kind of like a continuation of what we did uh, up in the mountain. But what do you think, now that you see that you are the pencil God created, and he wants you to write a story? What's the story that you're going to write with the pencil of your life? I think just to serve, serve more and um, help our young people change. You know, I don't know you personally, but I saw you this weekend. And you have a servant's heart. You, re I don't, you guys know her more than I do. Every time I've come to this church, I never see you sitting down. You're always chasing the young people or the juniors. You're and always. Kids. I, get, I pay the kids today to do that. I go to take them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes you need to be served too. Yes. So I'm really glad that you can recognize that and that you do that. But you do definitely have a servant's heart. And, and I know that um, the leadership of this church appreciates because I appreciate it when I see you. Mm -hmm. So thank you yeah. for all the work that you do here. How about you, son? Uh, hard work. I'm not best at you want, you want to just give it a little bit more gas, huh? Put some energy behind it. What kind of workings do you mean? What, what is it you want to do? Uh, you don't know yet? What, what, can I, do you mind if I ask you, are you in high school? Yeah. You're still in high school? What do you want to do after high school? Uh, probably go to college. You're not sure? Oh, you said go to college. Yeah, I want to go to college. What do you want to major in? Uh, probably business. You know, and we need business administrators in the church. Yep. When you guys seek out your careers, think, how can I bring this back to the house of God? How can the families in my community benefit from my education, from my skills? Uh, I'm sure that if you talk to Sister Solomon, you told her you wanted to be, uh, that you're gonna be a business major, I'm sure that she could plug you in. Maybe you could be um, a bookkeeper, you know, or, or, or help with different departments. I think that's a very great message that the children need to hear more about applying their life and what they do in bringing it back to the church. That's the first time I've heard that in oh, years. Thank and you. It is very important. It is. That we serve because yes. we are servants. We're not our own entity. We're not out there. That's what we're what created we for. We're created to be used, right? Sister, what what do you think after seeing this little presentation? I'm serving the Lord. I'm serving the Lord. I'm being a leader for the youth. Open my home. Hospitality. <laughs> yes. Somebody better take your notes. Mm -hmm. some notes here. I you got your, your business. <laughs> you got your hospitality host. How about you, Joanna? Uh, I think I would write it um, regardless how empty your heart can be. Um, God can heal it. Yes. I feel and feel all the emptiness that you have in your heart. So you're going to work on the inside. Remember, you're going because you're the lead. And that lead needs to be purified, right? Yeah. So that's something where you can start. And then after that, you'll be able to start writing, yeah. right? The, what, the purpose that God has for your life and yeah. function as the body. How about you, sis? Just testify to others that don't know about God. An evangelist, right there. Because there's a lot of them that need it. Amen. Yeah. Everybody needs it. Not just some people. Everybody, the person you sit next to when you ride the bus, the person you work with that's in the office or the cubicle next to you, the lunch lady, when you go pick up your dry cleaning, right? Everybody, you know, all you have to say is, all you have to do is just smile at them and say something like, have a Jesus-filled day, and they'll be like, what? Oh, you're a believer? And then the opportunity opens up, right? Okay, how about you, young man? You don't know yet? Are you still in high school? Yes. Okay, do you have plans for out, out, out after high school? Not yet, I no. still think I'm good. So what are you considering? Mm. Not much. Not much? <laughs> Is there something that you really like? I don't even know that yet. You don't know that yet. Okay, so then maybe you need to get together with your pastors and see um, you know, maybe you can start volunteering, serve someplace, and then that unravels. That's what we talked about um, this weekend. Thank you. How about you, young lady? To be more forgiving and to get closer to God. Okay, that's what your story is going to say? So you feel like you have to forgive somebody from something? Okay, very good. How about you, young man? 
the one back there. <laughs> what do you think your story is going to read? I'm sorry? You want to serve God? How are, you, how are you going to serve God? Doing more? What are you doing right now that you can do more of? You don't know? Okay. How about you, young man? Uh, I'm never going to give up. On You're not going to give up? On what God has planted. Yes. Okay. Stamina. Tenacity. Isn't that what the apostles had? They never gave up. If you've never read a book about the apostles and you want to read one, read the Fox's Book of Martyrs. I couldn't even finish it. I, it's taken me years. I'll read a little bit. And it's just so horrific how our 12 apostles died. Yes. yes. Isn't it? We're nowhere near that kind of persecution. And we can't even live for God. Right? Um, how about you? Well, I won't say it really right, but we'll draw out my plan mm -hmm. uh, to how to execute. I guess execute um, everything to be able to help the church to, uh, I guess, lead, to be able to lead out to, to <coughs> or to assist something. Yes, there's some place where every one of you, regardless of your age or your gender, there's some place where you can all plug in. All right? And on yours, I remember you have leadership skills on your survey that we did. So you have to walk into it by faith. You've got to get that sharpener out and allow the leaders of the church to sharpen you to get you to where you need to go so that you can be useful in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. What about you? To have more trust and faith in the Lord. Uh -huh. uh, I won't have that fear of having out in the church. Ah. Because outside of the church, I can meet many people when it comes to the church. I just, the Lord, I really don't use my talent here. Right, so you've recognized that you have skills that you use outside. So this weekend you learned that, you know what? Like she said, we need to teach our young people to bring those skills back into the church. So that's an awesome, awesome perspective on your part. How about you? Uh, to be there for someone that's broken. Yes. Compassion. Right? Mercy. Okay, you weren't there at my class this weekend, but that's what I can read by your comment. Very good. How about you, Sister Lorena? Well, I want to write, you know, be able to help others, you know, with my own experience. Yes. You know, to never give up. Yes. There's something out there for you. And, you know, if you never give up, your life is... I mean, there's things that are going to be in your way, but just keep going. Yes. One of your talents is faith, right? Yeah. You're one of my faith ladies. Yeah. So, do everything, you know, just keep going. Yes. Don't look back. Mm -hmm. Don't get off the track. No. Nope. Even if you're just, you know, like, you know, step like, by step. Yeah. But you'll get there. <laughs> Even if you're on those, you know, like the cartoons have those little rollers and that's all you can do. <laughs> hey, roll. Okay? Yeah. Just roll. <laughs> I mean, you're going to go back. For a little bit, but just you know, get, get going, back get on. Up and get going. Dust yourself off, get yeah. back on, and keep going. Amen. Amen. How about you, Sister Patty? So, um, just to like pray more and everything to help, but like get our talents out there and to like most faith, you know, and faith to also have the young people know that you know, God does a lot of things when you believe. Yes, He will. He always shows up Amen. and He shows off. Amen. Amen. How about you? I'm sorry? Open up. You want to be able to open up a little bit more? <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, we need to pray for the introverts, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, so that's why I tell, you know, pray so God give me that faith, give her, you know, so that the faith can help get people open up or uh -huh. be able for them to know that they they could trust someone yes. who's the Lord. Yes, And that ha that'll happen if you go to small groups. Amen. When you start working in a small group where there's a few people, then we can draw those kids out that are very introverted. But everybody has a skill, even if you're an introvert, because we need introverts that will work behind the scenes. Us extroverts, we want to be in the front row, you know, and the, when the, the people in the background is what makes us look really good. <laughs> and right? I think what, what happened, like, this weekend, you know, it would really help a lot of the kids, you know, 
to go to get to know and open up mm -hmm. and express, you know, what they have inside, I think. Yes. Because there's a lot of them inside mm -hmm. every kid. Yes. So I think, you know, I think doing these kind of things will help them yes. open up and be like, okay, I didn't know you were going to the same thing. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's why we have, the, our churches have these events. And it's important that we all attend these events because that's where the life changes happen. Yes, it's good. You have to miss work. You know, it costs money. But you're investing in your church community. And yes. so when you have these activities, make every effort to be there. Okay? What about you? Um, to keep my head up. Um, And how is that going to work in the church? How do you think you're going to affect the church? What's the story going to be said about you? Um, so you're talking about help. I hear a lot, a lot of people say help. Help what? Help where? Help how? Help um, the younger kids now think the same things that, that I have to. Oh, okay. Do you work in children's ministry? No. Why not? I don't know. Do you like kids? Yeah. You know it's hard for us older ladies to be taking care of kids. We're tired, <laughs> right? We need daycare workers. We need, you know, the uh, elementary school workers. That's where all you young people come in, male and female. If you want to help, help out with the children's ministry. Have uh, promotions for them. Have activities for them. Take them to the park, right? Have events for them in your churches. That's why you guys are very creative. Yes. Right? You young people are very creative. You guys can do those kind of things. All right. What about you, babe? We have an evangelist. Yes. <laughs> she's so quiet. You're an introvert. Did you guys hear that? Yes. But she's an evangelist. She doesn't even realize what she just said. It's okay. my evangelist to her. Yeah. So an evangelist is somebody that doesn't have any shame and they'll walk and say, hey, come over. We're going to have a youth night. We're going to have a body set. We're going to have a cookout. We're going to um, make baskets for the homeless or whatever. And you're going to be the person that gets everybody here, right? You're going to tell them about the Lord and how the Lord can change them. When they don't have any hope, you're like, oh, I know where there's hope. Amen. There's hope at El Bethel, right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. What about you, young man? I want to use the talents that I have. So, like, I can use it inside the church. Yes. But also outside the church to bring the outside to the inside. Yes. We're going to open our doors to everybody, whosoever will. That's what the Bible says, right? Amen. Yes. Very good. How about you? Um, my little, uh, my little, like, how I you and the people around me, how I, like, um, I kind of just, like, show myself. Mm -hmm. So, I, when you said the way I treat people, right. You know, a lot of you guys have the gift of hospitality. You don't even know it. Hospitality, you said how you treat people? I would put you at the front door, and I would make you a greeter. He is one. Oh, here it is? <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, Not that's... all the time, but... Uh, oh, has... okay, I didn't know that. That's when you said treat people, boom, that's where I said, okay, that's where I plug you in. That's awesome. You know, um, when people come to church, no offense to us older people, but you know, we want to see new faces, lively faces, happy faces. Not us that are all wrinkled and all that, okay? <laughs> so we need to get you guys out there. Get in front, you know. At our church, what our kids do is they even have like welcome banners and they greet the you know, people that come in when they're coming uh, and driving by. So that's something that you could start thinking about doing too. Okay? How about you, young man? I would uh, write about how much easier it is to live with live in the church, you know, with the Lord in your life than it is out in the world. Yes, isn't that the truth? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Did you young people hear that? He would write about how much easier it is to live in the Lord, in the church, than it is to live out in the world without the Lord. Yes. Isn't Amen. It? Yes, you don't have to go out of the church and experience things. You get beat up, you get hurt, you get sought and punched and chewed up and spit out. The, wor the world is place space. They want you to bring you in and tell you this is good and this is great and all that. And when you get there, you're like, no, it's not. Yeah. Okay, how about you? I would write 
how great it was to be a teacher and teacher of the Lord. And also, I want to write Venus, a winner of souls, and also to challenge the naysayers of God. Wow. I would do that. Yes, that would be very good. good. That's beautiful. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. How about you? See, when you're his age, you're going to be able to say, I never experienced that. I had a good because I stayed with Jesus. You stayed in the church, yeah. <laughs> Right? No drugs. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Absolutely. Amen. How about you, Angel? I would like to show my devotion to the Lord. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.